the Jaguars have a dynamic duo brewing on the edge. I'll tell you exactly who and what I'm talking about in just a second. You are Locked On Jags, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for joining me for another edition of Locked On Jaguars. I am Tony Wiggins, the host of Locked On Jaguars. We thank you for joining us and making us your first listen because it's your team every day and we are free on all platforms. Make sure you like and subscribe on our YouTube page as well as follow us wherever you get your podcast. I want to talk about the edge situation today. And what I mean is what's brewing on the edge for the Jacksonville Jaguars, this budding entanglement, if you will, of friendship, uh, of lack of separation. Uh, between Josh Allen and rookie Trevon Walker. We're going to get into all of that stuff. I'm going to also have some fun with you guys and name some of the best duos, guys who were sort of inseparable and had that I call the work buddy relationship where they played the same position and they complemented each other very, very well. And also give you a hint in the third segment on exactly statistically what I think will happen this year with Josh Allen as well as Trevon Walker. We'll get into that. But first, I'm going to give you a little bit of backdrop. I do think uh, that when the Jaguars chose Trevon Walker, they actually made the right decision over uh, Aiden Hutchinson and any other uh, player at that position. And I think a lot goes into knowing what you have, who you have, and what type of team you're going to be and getting guys that are like-minded that can work together. The reason why I'm doing this podcast is because if you've been out at Jaguars training camp, which I wasn't able to step out there today, but I actually came up with this idea yesterday that um, I I noticed for the first two or three days that those guys, Josh and Trevon, were inseparable. I mean, everything that they do, they do it together. And sometimes they're doing it by themselves and no other edge edge rushers are around so they're not apart from the group or anything like that but there there are times when there's extra work being done that it's just those two and it's not always at the end of practice it's at the early functions and the early parts of practice when it's just them two along with one coach and they're working and getting reps i posted a video yesterday um of those two guys and those two guys alone putting the work in together What's the significance of that? I just think that when you have two guys that are that committed and that are team leaders who are willing to work as a tandem, uh, understand what they're supposed to do, uh, trust each other, lead by example, that it bodes well for the football team. Everything is so different this year from a player perspective than it was last year under head coach Urban Meyer. The entire organization <clears throat> everything excuse me the entire organization uh with the way that they're going about their business it's very very workmanlike and you don't have to always rule with this iron fist in order to get people to respond and that's what's going on with Trevon Walker and Josh Allen Trevon Walker came out of Georgia and there was a lot of talk about his ability or inability to be a lockdown rush rush in and uh, a guy with all of these different pass rush moves or whatever and he didn't have statistics to back up uh, being the number one pick. But what he had was he had a, 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 an athletic build, an athletic body, and an athletic skill set that makes you think that the sky's the limit for him uh, as a Jacksonville Jaguars. He's built just all sim- very, very similar to Josh Allen. He's a little taller. I think he has Josh by a clean inch. He's a little bit taller. His arms look like they're a little bit longer. And uh, he's a little heavier, maybe seven or eight pounds bigger than Josh Allen with the way they play. They might be the biggest edge duo that I've seen in some time Um, in terms of guys who stand up and not put their hands on the ground. I know in Washington they have a couple of real big guys, Chase Young um, and Josh Sweat, but 
I don't think both of those guys stand up. I, I do believe they, they're a 4-3 team and they put their hands on the ground. I don't recall seeing maybe T.J. Watt and Bud Dupree a couple of years ago. But outside of that, I don't recall, and I don't even think they're bigger than these guys uh, collectively. 6'5", 272 for J Javon Walker, or Trayvon Walker, and 6'6", six, six, or 6'4", six, and some change for, for Josh Allen at about 265. That's a really, really big stand-up duo, but they don't lose anything in terms of their ability to move and their ability to come off the edge and their ability to be quick and fast. Josh Allen <clears throat> was lights out as a rookie, had double-digit sacks. Uh, of course, he also had Kalez Campbell and Yanni Kangakwe uh, to sort of show him the ropes. And what you see Josh Allen doing now is something that was actually done in the past by Josh Allen. The same thing he's doing for Trayvon Walker is the same thing that Kalez Campbell did for him. And uh, it's also being received the same way with all of the extra work that they're putting in. Two huge, huge football players that when you watch it, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that there's a difference between them and everyone else. But they're also yoked the same in terms of how they want to work and how they want to improve and how they want to get better. Um, we're at the press conference yesterday, Josh Allen snuck up as Demetrius Harvey, my friend, was asking uh, Trayvon Walker a question about Josh Allen. And Josh Allen, I was standing in the back. I saw him coming, and he walked right up. And it was like perfect timing. Um, it's almost as if Demetrius knew he was about to come up. And the way that they look at each other and talk to each other, you would think that these guys have been friends for a long, long time. Does it translate to on-the-field success? That's all anybody wants to know. I think it could. I really do think it could because I think this is the first time in a long time Josh Allen actually has someone on the other side of the field that can take a little bit of the pressure off of him. I also believe Josh Allen has always been better served to play uh, standing up as opposed to putting his hand in the dirt. So um, I actually think that the way that they conduct themselves and the way that they're acting and uh, the way that they're existing to together – uh, with this just being the start of training camp, I think it's a really, really big deal, and it bodes well for the Jaguar. So I'm going to tell you how much in segment three what I think the statistical value will be and how I believe it's going to go uh, for both of them this year. But next, I'm going to talk about other dynamic duos in Jaguars history to kind of get you guys all primed up and ready to go so you can – uh, be excited about the start of the football season. And I'll let you know in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars what that's all about. First, I need to tell you guys about Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Ready? Delicious, indulgent cookie dough. You heard what I said. Cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to our new favorite cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. It's all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. You ain't going to sit here and absorb a bunch of calories and stuff that lacks protein. Nope, because it's only 160 calories and they got 15 grams of protein in them. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you and your family. It would be the perfect treat, or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them for yourselves. That sounds more like it. Go to built.com and use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Once again, the promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off of your new Built Bar Puffs cookie dough. All right. Rolling along here on Locked on Jaguars, we once again thank you for making us your first listen. It is your team every day here. I am Tony Wiggins. So just in case you guys don't know, I covered the team for 13 years. I'm a native of Jacksonville. I moved back to Jacksonville once the team, once the franchise was awarded to the Jaguars and used to get guest passes at practice before I was actually an official member of the media. But I remember those two days in that hot sun, man, going out there at 7 in the morning and coming back at 4 in the afternoon. So I saw all of these great duos, and I saw – they haven't won a lot, but when they did win, it was really, really fun around here. And there were some duos at every single position. 
guys that played the same position they complemented each other really really well and when i go through some of them because i'm talking about trevon walker and josh allen possibly having that sort of impact especially if the team wins when the team wins you remember stuff like that when they don't win you don't um so far i think uh their conduct and the way that they're conducting their business in terms of being professionals they're putting the extra work in they're working like two guys who uh were, were undrafted like they just got picked up out of usfl or xfl or something that's how they're working they're the most talented guys on the defense and they're the guys that are actually putting in the most work and i think it's very very contagious and what's going on is that is being picked up by other members of the uh the football team and i always believe that whenever you can get your most talented people to work the hardest that that is a recipe for success eventually we've had that in the past here i'm gonna tell you who jimmy smith and keenan mccardell there was nothing like i remember the standing there looking through the chain link fence back in, back in the day and watching those guys conduct the way that they you know the way that they conducted the workout during practice every single rep meant something and there was a lot of pride and you saw what that did on the football field they were always a real funny story as jimmy says that jim keenan always said he was open jimmy caught a touchdown for mark burnell and they went back to the bench and and jimmy looked at mark burnell and and, and keenan looked at mark burnell and said you know i was open like I don't give a damn about you and Jimmy scoring scoring a touchdown. I was open. Throw me the ball. So if you see Keenan McCardell to this day, I don't care if you see him in the mall, dinner, you ain't got to interrupt him. Just go, Keenan, are you open? He's going to say, damn right, I'm open. I'm always open. So that's obviously the duo that you think about the most. I thought when they <clears throat> put Jimmy into the ring of honor, or I, I guess they, they might have called it something else, you know, but when they put his name up on the inside of the stadium, I thought a great idea would be to put them together, to put 82 and 87 up there as a duo. Keenan had a great, great career. Uh, other great duos that I can think of, Tony Baselli, soon to be a Hall of Famer, Tony Baselli, uh, already a Hall of Famer, but soon to be enshrined uh, within a week, and Leon Searcy. Yeah. Leon doesn't get a lot of credit. He was a pro bowler. He was one of the best in the league at his position. Back in the day when right tackles were more road graders, but he was the blind side to a left-handed quarterback. So I think he should get more consideration, and I think people need to remember just how good Leon Cersei was uh, with Tony Baselli. So that's a, another good duo. To stay on that side of the ball, how about Fred Taylor and Maurice Jones-Drew? Guys who complemented each other very well. Uh, Fred was at the top of his game, and the team picked Maurice Jones-Drew in the second round, and Fred wasn't selfish. Fred helped him. Uh, Maurice gives Fred all the credit, and they were really, really, really uh, something to behold uh, because you never got a break. When one was in the game and the other one went out, uh, it was the same thing. You did not lose anything in terms of production, and those guys to this day remain extremely, extremely close. Defensively, there's some easy ones to think about, but there's also some that you probably don't think about uh, maybe as much as you should. I think the best linebacker to ever play for the Jaguars is, is Buck. Yeah, I, I really do. And when I say Buck, y'all know I'm talking about Daryl Smith, 52. Uh, I think Daryl Smith is the best linebacker to ever play. And I think the guy next to him, Mike Peterson, was also is also one of the top three or four linebackers to ever play on this team. Together, they were wicked, though, and they were interchangeable. They were sort of like uh, Shelton Quarles and uh, Derek Brooks in the sense that you could switch them out. I think Daryl Smith excelled at all three positions. And I talked to Paul Spicer earlier. He happened to just be in, in, in my vicinity. And we had a nice 30-minute conversation. He says he thought Daryl Smith was the best linebacker on the team. He said the thing about Daryl Smith is he played Sam, Mike, and Will and did them all. Did all of them. So, uh, and, and did them at a high level. So, that's a great, great duo to think about. Here's one. And this is this is one that sort of reminds me a little bit of uh, what we have now with the Trevon Walker and Josh Allen, Marcus Stroud and John Henderson. I know I'm taking you guys down memory lane and we're all going down memory lane here. We, we guys, me guys, all of us. But listen, Henderson and Stroud was it was like the Twin Towers. 
they were equally good. Stroud was probably a little better because he was a little he was a little more twitchy as an athlete. But Big John was something else, man. They were immovable in the middle of the Jaguars defense. And the thing that strikes me, they're both well, I think John was 6'7 and and and, and Stroud was 6'6, both well over 300 pounds. Quick off the ball, both could rush the passer. They batted balls down. It was just a big, nasty, mean duo in the middle of that Jags defense. The reason why that one reminds me so much of these guys, even though they don't play inside, they play edge, is because they're going to work hand in hand. One, two, they're both big for their respective positions. They're both equally tall and equally talented, equally athletic. And I don't know if Stroud and Henderson were as um, as close demonstrative demonstratively close as these guys are but they were a hell of a hell of a duo and i know you guys are probably thinking there's a couple of other ones that i might be missing but those are the ones those are the duos that come to mind for me about guys that played the same position who uh complemented each other very very well and the reason why you remember them is one because they were great players but two the jaguars had a modicum of success when those guys uh were actually in their primes that's when they were in their primes, the Jaguars were showing up every now and then going to the playoffs and could score and compete with anybody in the NFL that you put in front of them, whether it was the Ravens, uh, the Titans, the Steelers, anybody you put in front of Jacksonville, the Jackson, the, the Jacksonville Jaguars, when they had those type of players, gave them an extreme amount of problems. We're going to talk more about what I think this year will mean statistically for the aforementioned guys I just mentioned. And I'll do that in just a second here on Locked On Jaguars. All right. Getting to what I believe statistically uh, Trevon Walker and Josh Allen have to offer. I'm going to go with Josh Allen because he's been in the league longer first. Josh Allen will benefit mightily, one, for, for a change of scheme. Two, he's also going to benefit from the fact that he has somebody on the other side that people actually have to watch out for. And three, he's going to benefit because I do believe that they're going to also be able to rush the passer and be very, very much improved from their interior. So for Josh Allen, I think he will, at a minimum, have numbers that are similar to or better than his rookie year where he had 10 and a half sacks. I'm going to say a 13-sack season because it's 17 games. I'm going to go a little bit higher than the normal standard 12. I'll say one more sack. I think the Jaguars will score more points offensively and therefore put the other team in a position where they're not just running the ball down the Jaguars' throat, that they have to go back and take some chances because I think the offense is going to be that much improved and teams are going to feel like they have to take risks and throw, uh, they throw the ball more than they probably did in the past against Jacksonville. So I'd say 13 sacks. Uh, for Josh Allen, I'd say you, you're going to hear the the Pro Bowl or the the All Pro stuff thrown around, and then he's motivated, man. They they pick up the fifth year option on him. You don't want to get tagged next year or any. You got they they got to pay him. You got to come see him. You got to give him his money. So uh, they I don't think they have to do anything yet. If they pick up the fifth year option, they can actually pay him next year, or they can probably you know nine times out of ten instead of taking that cap hit work a deal out with him. And I think this is a, he's always been the kind of guy that's been motivated anyway, real nice dude, good person. So I do believe that they're going to uh, come see him with some uh, a contract extension next year, but he is going to play lights out this year. I really do believe he's going to have a big year. He's healthy. He has uh, put the time in, spent his own money to pay for the team to work out with Robert Mathis, the great Robert Mathis. And he's really, really healthy. The knee's not bothering him. He's moving around really, really well. And one thing about the NFL, when you put the work in, eventually what's going to happen is the work is going to pay off for you. For Trevon Walker, it's a little bit different. And I know this is going to come with a lot of stuff attached to it about the draft and folks are going to watch him and they're going to watch Aiden Hutchinson and they're going to watch Thibodeau up in New York. And they're going to watch Jermaine Johnson and everybody's going to want to compare numbers. So as I told everyone, and I said on this podcast around the draft time, that if the team wins, 
No one will cherry pick stats and numbers in trying to credit or discredit Trevon Walker uh, for what he might or might not be able to do statistically. If the team doesn't win, you can bet everybody's going to use his statistics to attempt to discredit uh, whether he should have been the number one overall pick, whether it was like I told you, he's a project, this, that, and the third. The one thing I don't think we're going to talk about too much more is scheme because they're going to let him go. They're going to turn him loose. He's going to make plays behind the line of scrimmage. He's going to cause other people to really, really, really have to uh, adjust for him. Now, I know it's the difference between college and the NFL, but – being in the NFL and being asked to do one thing and just work on that one thing all the time, I think it's going to b- benefit him tremendously. And that big, long frame, eventually, all of that stuff's going to come together. He's going to figure the game out. He's going to be a guy who bats balls down. I think he's going to chase the quarterback off of his square, and other guys are going to get sacks because he's going to be able to do that. He's going to get some secondary sacks where stuff runs into him because he's just – He's just a football player, man. He's an athlete. So what I suspect you're going to see with him, I think you're going to see eight sacks. I think you're going to see a bunch of uh, um, tackles for loss in the running game. I think you're going to see uh, maybe three or four times where he strips the quarterback of the football because he's going to probably hit them when they ain't expecting to be hit or get his hand in. He's going to strip the football. You're going to see batted balls. Wouldn't be surprised if he's Johnny on the spot and gets a tip pick six. He's just going to have a tremendous impact. And by the end of the year, there won't be one person wondering whether or not he uh, was worth the number one pick. They're going to be people just wondering what's the roof, what's the ceiling on his ability and how much more better can he get? I hope this podcast can't get too much better because that means I ain't doing my job, right? But I'll tell you what you can do. You can check out the Locked On NFL podcast, a national podcast. It's about the entire NFL. You can check me out on Wednesdays with my partner, James Rapine. But it's also Monday through Friday. It's uh, Other guys are involved. And I'm telling you, it's razor sharp, man. This is a really, really good show. It's about all the things going on, entire, on the, in the entire NFL. And you need to make sure you check that out wherever you get your podcast. Make that your second listen. And go check the YouTube page out and like and subscribe that to that also all right man you guys take care of each other one more day i will make my return back to training camp tomorrow i had a follow-up doctor's appointment today and it lasted a little longer it wasn't me it was them it was taking all day and what they had to do didn't really take that long but uh, never mind we'll get on those doctors later but until then i'm gonna go out to training camp and give you the news and the notes of the day uh from training camp and tell you what to look out for looking ahead to next week where the team will finally get a chance to get in some pass before they go up to Canton, Ohio and induct or enshrine Tony Baselli into the pro football hall of fame and uh, play the Las Vegas Raiders until then you guys take care of each other and we'll see you tomorrow on another edition of locked on Jaguars.